yeah, I don't. I just want to keep making things. Like I don't. I don't know. As like I, I was talking about, like finding my own lane in like the the world of like people creating music and just like finding the the things that I like to do. But I don't know. I want to keep keep trying new things and like see see what works and what doesn't. And I just want to. Yeah, I don't know. I, I never want to stop creating. Living Banter Podcast. This is a great podcast, but with the guest, it's even better. Guys, today we have a phenomenal guest. So please like and subscribe because this episode is about to go through the roof. With over 100,000 music streams on all platforms, verified artists coming to us from Rochester, New York, it's Benjamin Bailey. Welcome to the podcast. What's up? Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> awesome, great, man. Awesome. Good to have you on. Good to have you here, mate. So, just before the podcast, we were talking about um, your name. So, what 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 was what's your full name? Run it run it by us again. <sighs> Benjamin Jacob <laughs> Asher Bailey, and uh, yes. Jacob Asher is okay. my my artist name. So, yeah, stage name. <laughs> Guess yeah. you could say. Love it. It's a so long. So, how's one. things in? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> how's things mm. in Rochester, New York, at the moment? Um, they're, I mean, for me, they're pretty good. I mean, I've been, yeah. we, we've been isolating over here since March and I, uh, I'm pretty used to it. Like I have like a daily rhythm and like just things that I do. So I feel, I feel pretty okay. I don't see very many people. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I live with my, with my girlfriend, so all things are good. Mm. Awesome. That's awesome. So let's uh, let's talk about music. What would you uh, consider? What would you consider your style to be? Because I know everyone has their a certain way that they would describe their style. So what would yours? What would you describe your style to be? Sure. Um, I guess in the broadest sense, I would say pop music, but um, mm. it's obviously one hundred percent electronic based. Um, yeah. I. Uh, I don't know. I I use a lot of like hip hop sounding things, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, awesome. but um, yeah, just overarching, I, I would say pop and maybe probably like obviously like left of center leaning. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm, fair enough. Fair enough. That's cool. And um, what what would be your choice software for making um for making music? Ableton all day. Yes, <laughs> so it was part of the Love Ableton it. gang. <laughs> Five. The best one. The best. Yeah. Because yeah. I see everyone's 100%. using Pro Tools, and I'm like, uh, can I just go yeah, back yeah. to my little corner with Ableton, you know? Yeah, for real. Also, like, like, yeah. Yeah. And also, I bought a Focusrite sound card way back in the way back when. So, like, it came with Ableton, and just like from there, I started learning Ableton and how to actually tune that like get that sorted and nice. yeah that's my that's my home d d a w oh, i can't talk <laughs> <laughs> you're fine yeah, yeah dude i i i love it it's it's the most like creative out of all of the the daws to me just because there are so many like just stock ableton like instruments and like mm, midi yeah. effects and like just there's so much you can, so much more that you can do way more like easily and quicker mm -hmm. than with like Pro Tools or like any of the others, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Did you ever branch out or was it always just Ableton? Um, it's mostly been Ableton. I've used, I've used Logic maybe like half a dozen times and I've used Pro Tools a little bit more than that. Um, as you guys know, I'm also in the band Joywave, and uh, all of Dan, yeah. uh, the the singer, is the the main writer and producer of that. But I've he he uses Pro Tools, um, so that is that's yeah. where I've used that very very minimally, and it's yeah, I don't know, it was it seemed more difficult to like get my wrap my head around than Ableton, but fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. So have you. 
So have you been recording, writing during this time or? Oh yeah, all the yeah, above, have, yeah. Have you, yeah, what have you been up to in this lockdown? Um, so I've just been like slowly, well not slowly, I guess pretty quickly. I've been putting out a single, maybe like once every two months or so. Mm -hmm. um, for pretty much the whole year. I think I'm gonna put out my, my sixth one in like probably toward the end of this month um but i've been like writing in the meantime and just like making beats and stuff so i think after mm -hmm. i put out this next one i'm gonna hunker down and like not put anything out and hopefully get like some sort of longer form release to uh put out like all together like just like i don't know what i'm gonna call it yet i've been toying with the mm -hmm. name mixtape just so it's not as formal you know yeah but um i get that yeah yeah I've, uh, uh, yeah 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 something i don't know that that isn't yeah. like it's an album you know yeah because yeah. that just i don't know that adds there's like connotations to that and like pressure and yeah all that 100 percent. yeah fair yeah. enough fair enough i understand that because i recently like started getting into like properly recording an album now so like for example mm -hmm. so with my album that i'm saying that I'm, yeah, my album that I'm <laughs> recording, I guess you could say, is all the guitar work was pretty much like down in the per in the first like three, four months of lockdown. And then after that, I'm like, I need to practice these vocals over and over and over. <laughs> and then I'm <laughs> I managed to actually get some studio time from a friend of mine who who is at a sound engineering college. So it. Like, I understand people, like, wanting to put out, like, singles and EPs and stuff like that. But for me, it was just, like, I have, like, what is it, nine or something songs that I think are really cool. So, I'm just going to stack them into an album. And literally, I came up with the album name. Like, it felt almost, like, by mistake. So, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, if I could say anything, it's like, you know, when an album name or EP name hits you, it hits you. That's... That's just is what it is. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. It depends on, like, what you feel you're ready to put out. Because, I mean, mm. I, it was, it was probably, like, very early 2019. I, like, wrote and fully produced, like, 25 songs. And I wanted to put out mm. an album at that point. And I was, yeah. like... Yeah, I'm so stoked. I made so many songs and they're all cool. Mm -hmm. And then after just living with them for a little while and trying to figure out like what I really wanted to be and how I wanted other people to perceive me, I mm -hmm. I narrowed it down and then I was like, I'm not gonna put out like an album or anything. I'll just put out singles and yeah. like test the water, see how people like what, because I was still trying to figure mm -hmm. out what I wanted to be, you know, and like what, what yeah, my lane enough. was. Mm -hmm. But that's dope that yeah. you like have an album in the works. like dude take yeah. your time doing that and yeah. enjoy the process like there's no rush like just enjoy yeah. it not gonna lie though that the album it was so weird because when i initially wrote the songs i was like oh these songs are pretty cool whatever i don't know the, the like lyrics kind of fit iffily here and there and i started practicing it and the more i practiced it the more the the songs actually started to make sense and like things started to line up a bit more i guess you could say so yeah, definitely like sit with the songs for a bit. And once I got all that done, I was like, you know what? I'm pretty much ready. I just have to, you know, because I've recorded everything. I just have to like get it, get it release. kind of sorted. Yeah, I'm not even released. Yeah, yeah. Get it mixed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did Final you ever time. get into, yeah. Did you ever get into like the realm of mixing or were you more like recording based? Um, do you mean mixing myself? Yeah, mixing, mixing your, yeah, mixing yourself. So that is, I actually kind of made a, uh, a mistake when I made like my first big batch of songs that I was telling you guys about. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't spend that much time mixing it myself to make it sound the way I wanted to. And I was mm -hmm. relying too much on a mixer to do that for me, which mm -hmm. is the opposite of what you should do you should like get yeah. it to a place where you're like 
yes, I love this, but I want to take it like one step further. And that's where a mixer can come in hand. You don't want to be yeah. like, oh yeah, this is 10 steps from where I want it to be. So, uh, but no, like mm. getting better at mixing is something I'm, I'm actually like taking the time to do that now. Like I uh, watch a million YouTube tutorials every day and just like mm -hmm. practice with like the, yeah. the dumb ideas that I make every day and like try to mix those and like get, get good levels mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Especially with beats too. Like if you're sending like a beat pack to an artist, like you want them all yeah. to, to hit a certain way. And like, if, if the mm -hmm. artist doesn't feel that off the bat, they're not going to like any of your stuff. So. It yeah, needs to be enough, loud yeah. and bumping, so you got to be able to mix like to a certain extent to yourself uh, for yourself. Yeah, I believe. Fair enough. Yeah, because um, the things you yeah, can learn through YouTube nowadays. Like I call yeah. it the University of YouTube because everything so that you want to learn is literally <laughs> on there. Yeah, it's, man, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the best. It's I love it. it. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. So one of the things like I found with mixing with someone else is that like i basically trust this person with my life it feels like because it's because him and i like went to high school together and were friends all throughout high school mm. and like i wasn't ready at that time to put anything out and by the time like i got out of high school i'm like okay cool now at some point this year i can actually like get some songs down and you know put on an album or whatever and like when i'm like in studio and he's mixing some of my stuff i actually like the way he does certain things you know and even though both him and i are different in regards of mixing it's it's cool to have someone who actually like is studying it if that makes sense like looking for their degree to get certified in pro tools so yeah that's absolutely yeah, yeah and like that. yeah like you said <clears throat> trusting someone with your life like it's I don't know. It's like dipping your toe in the exposure, like sharing something you've been working on with just a mixer alone is very daunting. Mm -hmm. But then again, like yeah. with the world, like putting it on streaming services like Spotify and stuff like it's it's scary. But after putting mm -hmm. out like as much music as I have this year, like I I'm, I'm over it, which is a good feeling. So I can just like, yeah, for sure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Put stuff out and not be afraid, which is a good feeling. Mm -hmm. I love that. Especially in a world where it's like instant gratification. So when people release or artists release music, audience is just like, we want more, we want more songs. So they release another one, they release another one. So I love the fact that you're not rushed to release, you're taking your time with it and almost yes. being agile with your music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having to like, I don't know. It's, it's definitely exhausting and can burn someone out like feeling like you need to constantly produce things like not even just music but just like things to post on socials and just like teaser videos and all of the things that yeah, yeah it's like I don't know I underestimated how much I was gonna have to do <laughs> yeah yeah Same I can definitely when see got that into the podcast space yeah oh I bet yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So also like a little bit behind the scenes here. So like right at, I remember like right at the beginning of this year, like getting all these like YouTube channels started up and start doing things here and there. It was, it felt like, oh yeah, I can take on the world. And then middle of the year, it's, I just got so frustrated with absolutely everything. And now, um, and it took like some real hard like determination to like really hone everything down to get the workflow going. So, like, finally at the, kind of towards the end of the year, the back end of the year, um, everything's starting to fit a lot better, and I'm not complaining, I'm not, you know, saying, oh, this, this, and this. It's all just like, well, I've done it, it's, it's going, you know? And the and passion I think, is pushing through. Yeah, the passion is pushing through a lot more, and I think that's just with a lot of things. You have to just, I, w I wouldn't say push through, but you kind of have to find, like, the, um, the, like, proper creative flow for doing things if, if that makes sense absolutely yes so like like even with it's the same sort of thing with like writing songs sometimes you have like a certain creative process that you can do so like for example one of the processes i used is look at some sort of aspect of my life and just start jotting things down on like a piece of paper about that certain aspect That's awesome 
So like, for example, in the first song I'm going to release as like a teaser, it's basically, it talks about a lot of like not feeling adequate because some girl left you on red, you know? And I was like, you know what? There's, there was just so many things I had to say and I just, I just made an instrumental and then I sang over using a few phrases I found here and there. And I pretty much, once that first song that I wrote this year kind of just kicked off, I was like, you know what? This is the kind of way I want the album to go. Where it's just like, it's an aspect of my life. I record an yeah. instrumental, sing something random over it, and then boom, there there it is. And yeah, that's that's just a creative, like I say, creative processes get you, get you going. Do you have any sort of like creative processes creative processes when writing songs or making beats or anything like that? Absolutely. Um, I, I try to start each, like every time I sit down on my computer, I try to start with like a, a fresh mind and like try to do things that I haven't done before. Um, and a lot of times when I write, like I'm not even thinking about writing. Like I just, I think of something in my head and then I'm like, oh, I got to write that down or like, I need to sing this into my phone right now. I'm, I'm never like sitting down like, okay, I'm going to write now. Mm. But um, yeah. And then I just kind of, I don't know. I, I do a lot of like free associative writing, just like taking a word mm. and then like finding things that associate with it. Pretty similar to what you said your process was and just like mm. free writing, like writing at whatever is on my mind um, can be helpful. Uh, but with making with making beats or like an instrumental or something, I don't know. I, I have a lot of like analog synthesizers that I've been collecting, like older mm -hmm. ones for the, the yeah. last couple of years. Wow. And um, I I just like, I sit down in front of one of those and just like around until I make a cool noise or like play like mm. some chord changes that I really like. And yeah, it's, us it's usually mm -hmm. about, I guess, finding like the, the bud of the idea and mm -hmm. then starting there, like just singing a phrase into my phone, writing down a couple of words, and then like fleshing it out from there and like letting the bud blossom into whatever kind of song that's going to be. Hmm. Interesting. So by analog synth, do you mean like the little like modular things or do you mean like analog synths as like plugins and stuff like that? Analog synth, I mean like a, like a full on a keyboard that like has basically like its, its own computer like they're all like from the 80s and it's it's not okay, it's not okay. a vst it's not oh, a plug-in yeah. like oh yeah I get yeah yeah. Now. yeah 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 because as soon as like you a, said like analog synth for some reason my mind just instantly went to like modular like those little modular, modular yeah I, yeah looking things for some reason <laughs> i haven't tried that tried that stuff yet but i it looks expensive and like a uh, yeah. an addictive habit to <laughs> <Yeah>. get into <laughs> yeah because there's this one YouTuber well, I, I watch a lot of called, I think his name's Andrew Huang. And like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, Love it's... Him. It's the thing is, right? It's such a shift to what I'm used to because I'm like a pop punk rock type of artist. And then I just shift... Yeah. Then I just shift to like someone like Andrew Huang is just like completely like synth based and pop based. And it's really interesting to actually dive into... Like different genres for example um i keep bringing up machine gun kelly on this podcast it's just <laughs> is what it is like i discovered him doing a song with one of my like i would say drumming heroes travis baker barker ba yeah travis okay. ba barker colson baker it, it messes me around and and then from there i actually went back to like his older rap stuff and found that i actually liked it so another question i want to ask is is there any other type of genres you like have messed around in you would say oh man um lately i've been just like writing a lot of songs just piano and vocal uh like singer songwriter mm -hmm. kind of stuff awesome. yeah. um mm -hmm. which has been like sort of a change of pace for me just because i usually start with like something in Ableton or just like something electronic, mm -hmm. but just like, yeah, sitting down at, at a piano and singing and like yeah. just recording that has, yeah, I've been doing that more lately, I would say. 
Mm. Um, but uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Hmm. Simple enough. Simple enough. That's great. <laughs> and what what are you enjoying the most during this time? Like obviously, maybe you have more time on your hands now, or you don't. But what are you enjoying do- doing the most? Um, I. I don't know because uh, I'm I'm usually gone touring for probably like eight to nine months out of the year. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I've ne- I haven't been this I haven't been home for this long in about seven years, which is pretty wild. Jeez. Wow! But um, I don't know. I've learned to really love it. Um, there are some days where like I I struggle to like find a balance of like I don't know just doing things, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I try to like, I, I really enjoy cooking. So I, I like, I cook mm, every day. Same. I exercise every day. I usually like go for a hike or something, um, make music. Awesome. I read a bunch. Like, I, I don't know. I try to just do all of those things every day just to like, I don't know, Sweet. keep my brain moving, you know, st- stay stimulated. Yeah. Also go fair crazy enough, fair enough. if I just like sit and do nothing during mm. the day. Yeah. You got to stay but busy. Yeah, for sure. How was life on tour? How did the average day on tour look like for you at the time? Um, touring is, it's really, really fun, but also really exhausting and can wear on you after a while, obviously. I mean, I, uh, I, I did my, my fair share of partying and like just getting, getting drunk and for the the first probably four or five years of that the last couple of years of touring I've, I've certainly calmed down but yeah it's just you can't you can't sustain that lifestyle forever and no. uh yeah it's like it's yeah. it's also pretty bad just for mental health reasons like not having the stability of being in one place so but um i don't know i've like i've had some of the best times of my life on tour like i'll, I'll never i'll never forget any of them Hmm. That's incredible. Dang. Yeah. Did and you ever get about... stage fright or have anxiety when performing? Or how did you deal with that? I used to. It's it's something that you kind of just have to yeah, I don't know. It gets it gets easier the more you do it, just like anything. Um I uh I went to college for piano performance, so I I have I've been like pretty much performing for my whole life, but um getting to like play with a band was a very different experience and I remember my first couple shows I was certainly very very nervous and like our first couple like live television performances I was very nervous but yeah. I don't know I, I think I, I settled into like my persona in the band mm-hmm. I guess just how I like the things that I do on stage live like it's it's very much like I don't know it's yeah. I, I'd like to think it's pretty unassuming. Like if, like if you guys were to like go watch a video of like Joy Wave performing right now, like it would be vastly different than probably how you're perceiving yeah. me right now. So it's just like me exercising a different part of me, which is a really great. Mm, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I also find that. But the thing is, um, you know, with COVID and everything, I haven't really been able to do like many live shows. I think I've had like one literally one actually sorry there's two this year there were two that i that i did this year that had my original songs being played at them and the first one was like just before lockdown so like feb sometime around there and then it was like maybe two weeks ago and there was like max 20 people there it was just yeah it was it was crazy so with that being said like what what are your like thoughts on how like the music industry is basically just like shut down the event industry is kind of just like handbrake up. Well, yeah. what are you, yeah. How are you feeling about that? Should I say? Um, I have, I have mixed feelings about that. Um, for me personally and for my, my mental health, uh, being home has been really, really great for me, but obviously I have a lot of friends in this industry, like not only musicians, but just people that like yeah. work for bands and just like crew members and stuff like that. Like they, they can't work, um, which is, 
which is hard um, to, especially, yeah, I don't know, just there's so many other industries that are also out of work. Like it's, it's hard to mm-hmm. pick up another job during this time too, when you've lost your main source of income. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know, there, there's a lot of bands that are trying to make it work doing like really intricate, like light shows for live streams and stuff like that. But I, I don't know that anyone has found any sort of solution or like a band aid for the live show experience. Like, I don't, I don't think that that is replaceable, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I just feel like everyone's just going to have to wait till there's a vaccine or the cases drop significantly. I don't know. Yeah. Like it's, I don't, I don't think it's going to be coming back anytime within the next like out. six months yeah i think we're just gonna have to wait which yeah. which sucks and i don't know and then from like a, a business aspect like labels that i know of they're not really signing anyone new because like touring and shows is such a big source of income for bands and for mm. labels like mm. and selling merch and just all that is like i don't know yeah. it's weird it's, it's like mm. Yeah, the, the the artists that are big right now are just gonna continue being big, and I don't really think there's any new artists that are gonna break. But who knows? Don't quote me on that. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm so honest, are, though, yeah. If I'm honest, things are though, weird I, right now. Yeah, things are weird. Well, yeah. And yeah, I think probably end of 2021 is only then when we're really gonna see like this. Is, this is just my predictions. End of 2021. Hopefully not, but yeah is only like then when we're really gonna see like a lot more shows like maybe there'll be i mean sure in like 2021 there's gonna be a few shows here and there with a lot of bands and things like that but i think only like right at the end yeah a lot of online shows though like end of 2021 i think only is there gonna be any sort of like pick up again in it this is just my prediction i could be wrong it could be sooner like the vaccine could like you know get discovered tomorrow and then Christmas medical yeah Christmas medical <laughs> that'd be awesome yeah yeah the I don't know I, I think discovered. I know what... yeah <clears throat> I think I'd have to agree with you I don't yeah late 2021 maybe who knows I don't know yeah 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 that's so you you've been in the industry for quite some time what made you want to get into music um I've I've been playing music for just about my whole life. Um, I started taking piano lessons when I was about four or five. And then Mm. I started like playing in band in high school. I played clarinet and, uh, and then I started playing guitar when I was a teenager as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I've always, I've always just been playing something. And then when I think I was about a week away from graduating, uh uh daniel joywave singer hit me up via facebook and was like yo do you want to be in a band because I, I i grew up in the same town as as uh, all those guys so I've, I've known them for a while mm-hmm. and yeah. that's just that's pretty much what i've been doing since i graduated from college so that's that is how i got into it so and cool. then maybe like mm-hmm. five months after i joined they mm-hmm. got signed and that's yeah. that's been that's been it ever since pretty crazy Wow, jeez. Yeah. That's awesome. What a story. Mm. And I saw also that you met Steve Aoki and obviously other phenomenons in the industry. But I just wanted to ask, how was that experience for you? <laughs> so, uh, it was okay. I was Same. definitely annoying him. <laughs> we were, it was my, it was my first time playing South by Southwest with, uh, yeah. with the band. And the hotel that we were staying at, Steve Aoki also happened to be staying at. So he was <laughs> like checking into his room or something. And I was just like, oh my God, should I get a picture? And I asked him and he was like, oh, yeah, sure. So I, <laughs> I felt bad. Oh, Lord. But um, at least he got the picture. Yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't like rude about it. He was just like, yeah, sure. Oh, but no. um, yeah, he's obviously know. like, he's like a legend at this point. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. It was it was really, really cool yeah. to, just to like physically see him in person. I think also 
maybe the next day I like saw Shaquille O'Neal in real life, which was pretty wild. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. But Shaq's a giant. Yeah, he's so yeah, tall. He's so I mean, he's obviously like a basket player, so he's tall, but like I don't yeah. think you can grasp how actually tall he is until you see him in real life. Giants. Like mm. is, yeah, isn't he also like really wide too? He's he has massive. gotten wider, yes. Oh. <laughs> he's a beast. Tall and oh, wide, yes. Agent. Yeah. Dude, I would not want to. I would not want to be in the same <laughs> half as him. Just a little, yeah. let alone like yeah. him blocking me. You're like, sup, dude. You're not getting <laughs> past me. Yeah, I'm not getting past photo, honestly. Yeah. Dude. yeah. <laughs> but then again, it it's would just like just show. Up. Yeah, it would just show how short I actually am. It's so yeah. funny. Like in all my videos, That's when people you know are like, short. "Hey, it's like, oh, you don't look that short." People see me in real life. It's like, dude, what the hell? Because <laughs> like I'm five foot. foot s- I'm like six five foot six, dude. Infinity. I don't even know. He's massive. Yeah, dude, I'm five foot yeah. six. So like, it's 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 definitely an experience. Yeah, he's a yeah. Guy. yeah. But Jacob wanted to ask, where are you wanting to take uh, your music in the future? What's next for you as we wrap up? Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, I don't. I just want to keep making things. Like, I don't, I don't know. As, like, I, I was talking about, like, finding my own lane um, in, like, the, the world of, like, people creating music and just, like, finding the, yeah. the things that I like to do. But I don't know. I want to keep keep trying new things and like see see what works and what doesn't and i just want to yeah i don't know i, I never want to stop creating but short term i want to like put out a mixtape early next year hmm. love that awesome so yeah awesome. your music is very unique and i really love it it's honestly like the taste that i have is very specific but your music is so unique it like it really fits in there it's really great so i'm thankful Thanks for so what much. you produce it's great and mm, yeah, just lastly, I mean. is there any advice that you, you want to give to maybe people starting up in the industry? What would be some advice you'd give to them? It is very hard and very competitive, yeah. but the more the more you are just being yourself, mm. people can people can see that and they can see that honesty and that you are genuine and you're not, I don't know, being fake and like it's it's all an act i don't know people people know when it's real so that is my best recommendation is just to be yourself that's awesome man and just five the last thing five random questions some speed fair questions enough, to enough. get to know you more almost <laughs> thanks for joining by the way so here it goes hoodie mm-hmm. or jersey what did you wear hoodie or jersey hoodie Perform in Madison Square Garden or the Staples Center? Ooh. <laughs> Staples Center. I've already played at Madison Square Garden. Damn. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Oh, Pop wow, music okay. or indie? Uh, I'm going to have to go pop music. Sorry. <laughs> PlayStation or Xbox? Ooh. Um... <laughs> Jeez, I think PlayStation. I'm not much of a gamer, but I'll go PlayStation. Sweet. Jacob Asher, it's been incredible having you on the Living Band <laughs> podcast. Is there anything you want to plug and let the viewers know? Yeah, I'm going to put out a song probably at the end of the month, and it is called Only awesome. One. And uh, it's fucking sick. It's really good. So be great. keep your eyes Love and that. ears open and peeled. And- so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. This was really fun. Thanks for joining. And uh, guys, the link. <laughs> you... Yeah. You go. No Sorry. Problem, man. Thanks for coming. I was going to say the link to your Spotify, SoundCloud, Instagram is all in the description. So, to our audience out there, go check it out. Send him some love. This guy's music is phenomenal. It's honestly great. So, go check it out. Send him some love. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe out there yeah. and uh, enjoy. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's been awesome. Like and subscribe easy, to the guys. channel, guys. Peace. Have a good one. Cheers, man. Cheers.